day. Yeah, it's a bit windy, isn't it? Welcome to the first day of the rest of your life. You see, every day is your birthday. Is the first day of your birthday. I still haven't quite got that right, have I? <laughs> um, happy birthday. Welcome to the first day of the rest of your life. You see, every day is your birthday. Why wait to start living a life you love? Let's start right now. Let's go. <laughs> there you go. That's a bit better, isn't it? Um, today we're going to talk about love. Um, slightly off the back of uh, a live that Joe Howarth did yesterday. Um, slightly off the back of the book I'm currently reading called Lovability. Um, link in the description. Um, uh, yeah, so that's basically it. And some of the thoughts I had yesterday as well, um, which I think it's interesting. I was having prompted it really but uh, I was having some thoughts yesterday morning as I was trying to wake up after uh, <laughs> a bad night's sleep let's say that's why I didn't do a live yesterday um, and um, and then I saw Joe's, Joe's uh, a live about love yesterday morning and it made me think oh interesting that's exactly what I was thinking about good morning happy birthday in uh, in a sly end I was, I was practicing it earlier I've no idea how to pronounce it I hope that's right in a sly end in a in a slayen. In the slayen. There you go. It's the best I can get, I'm afraid. I hope it's close. Uh, let me know if that's close enough. <laughs> Thanks very much. And happy birthday to you. I hope you have a lovely day today. Um, and uh, before we go on talk about more about love, happy birthday to the other people who's... Uh, actually, it's happy birthday to yesterday for you, wasn't it? Uh, um, is there a shorter version, you know, maybe? I don't know. Um, happy birthday to uh, Katrina Plain today and uh, Warren Perry. Warren Perry, how you doing, mate? Haven't seen you for ages. Hope all is well with you. I used to work with him in the farmer world back in the days. Good times in Mexico, didn't we? We had Mexico one time. That was fun. Uh, and happy birthday for yesterday, which is obviously Inna. I'm going to go Inna. Um, um, I hope that's not offensive. Feel free to tag me and say something in the in the comments if you want. Um, uh, Jamie Cullman. Um, you're in Hawaii. I'm looking to get to Hawaii sometime later next year. Mm, October-ish time next year. So if you're around, love to meet up and have a coffee. That'd be great. Happy birthday for yesterday, though, good Jamie. Um, and uh, Philip Cottonou, who's also um, from back in the uh, uh, back in my pharmaceutical days, um, back in the uh, France, obviously. Uh, Philip, Philip Cottonou, of course. Uh, je suis français, or il il ils sont français, I guess. Um, he is French. Um, Heels, il est, il est, il est Francais. There we go. <laughs> it's been a long time since I spoke French. Um, it is something I want to get back into, and uh, yes. So anyway, talking back to love. Back to love. Um, so um, the book today was talking about um, "I love you because," um, which I thought was kind of cool. But it was asking, should there really be a because in there at all, or should it just be "I love you regardless, <laughs> unconditionally"? Um, Je suis français. Ah, ah, indeed. Uh, yeah, je suis français, mais uh, Philippe, uh, il est uh, français. Um, je suis ne pas français. <laughs> um, bonjour, uh, Rachel. There we go. Um, <laughs> uh, there we go. Oh, look, there's a little thing on here. It says, make comments full screen. Ooh, I'll have a little play with that. Just hold on a second. What does that mean? I don't know. Okay. Didn't seem to do anything. Or maybe that's this button up here. Is that button up here? Oh yeah. Oh, there you go. Yeah, big comments on there. That's kind of cool. <laughs> makes the screen, that makes the comments on the screen really big, so I can read them easily. That's kind of cool. Um, I'm also talking about love because yes, um, should you put conditions on it? Um, if some you, you're loving somebody because they're beautiful, because you love their the way they talk, you love the way they think. Um, yeah, but do you not just love them anyway, regardless of all that stuff? Oh well, that's part of it, but. Um, should you not perhaps be loving them just because you love them? Um, and uh, I thought it was an interesting way of thinking about it. Um, thank you, by the way. I love you. Shadane. I love that. Um, uh, yes, so that was the thing. And then it was like, okay, so let's, let's look at that a little bit more. So when you say, oh, it's raining. Yikes. <laughs> um, I shouldn't really worry about it. I've got no hair, have I, to get wet? Um, there you go. Um, but it does get it'll drip down my neck if I'm not careful in it. So, anyway, um, I can't really what I think I was thinking about now. Um, oh yeah, do you put conditions on that love? Um, there's a lot of times when you'll say, um, "I love you because I've really lost my train of thought completely um, of the way you look, the way you act, um, and all that stuff and that." And, and I've said a few um, uh, weeks ago when I was talking about this the first time round uh, that. Um, <laughs> that I uh, uh, 
I love certain people because of certain attributes and so forth. Um, it's like, I love you because, and then you say these sort of things and you try and work out why you actually love them. Um, and that's good and everything, but real unconditional love is I love you just because you're a human being. Um, it's an interesting concept. I'm not sure about it really. Um, I need to delve into it a little bit more. It's one of those things, isn't it? And I kind of forgotten about it as I was running um, what I was going to say about it. He just goes, isn't it? You plan these things and then sometimes life kind of gets in the way and things don't quite go the way you want them to do. Um, but I suppose the question is when you're, when you say when you love somebody because of something, um, I just remembered of one of the lines I was going to say, do you love people when you receive, do you do the same thing when you're receiving love as well? So do you think to yourself when somebody's loving me, why are they loving me? What is it that they're loving about me? Um, and am I doing the right things? Because then it becomes a transactional kind of love, doesn't it? Um, anyway, just something to thought about, something to ponder on. Um, so the thing that came out from uh, the thing I was thinking about before um, Joe's live yesterday, and I probably should have gone back and checked my notes on what I actually said back to Joe uh, that prompted me to think about, um, what I, about love for me, um, is that I feel like I haven't got enough love in my life, or I haven't had enough love in my or I haven't felt enough love is probably a better way of putting it. I haven't felt like, because this comes back to the... Um, when somebody says, uh, I always or never, when you use the words always and never, um, sorry, I lost my viewers, guys, I hope you're okay. Um, hello, Celine. Bonjour, Celine, a French name as well. We did French earlier on. Uh, hello, Jamie as well, how you doing? Um, the, um, <laughs> was I lost my train of thought again, didn't I? Um, oh, yes, uh, always and never, the words always and never. Um, you always do this, or you never do this, or I always do this, or I will never do this. Um, and uh, somebody said on one of the lives before, which was, perhaps you could, a better way of doing that would be to say, I feel like you never, and I feel like you always, because then it doesn't take away the that kind of like black or white kind of concept about this whole thing, um, where, because it's not, you, it's rarely always, um, and it's rarely never. Um, there are often... Um, exceptions, oh, that's good words here, um, <laughs> to, 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 to prove that um, that isn't always the case. And it's the same thing about that love thing I was just saying there. Is I don't, I, I, I didn't, I said initially, I didn't have enough love in my life. Hello, good morning, uh, Daniel. Um, I didn't have enough love in my, I don't feel like, no, I didn't, I, I don't have enough love in my life is what I actually said, wasn't it? Um, but actually, it's I feel like I don't have enough love in my life. Um, that's kind of really what... Um, uh, sorry, we were playing around earlier on with uh, make the comments full screen. And it's all very well, but I can't see myself, so it's kind of distracting. Um, I want to be able to watch what I'm doing and what I look like on screen so that I can kind of do things on here. And um, Anyway, um, yeah, so I didn't feel like I've been had enough love in my life. So I've been single... 90% of my life so I haven't had relationships very often had a few um, and they'd be lovely um, but there hasn't been a long-term thing I think uh, about two years was my, my longest relationship with Christina um, that, I, that I ever had I've had lots of long-term friendships and close relationships and even girlfriends who um, who have been girlfriends and then not been girlfriends and then but still carried on being friends for many many years afterwards Pippa and Claire um, for example um, and Karen, of course, um, although that's um, gone away a little bit now. Um, but I, it, it, it's never felt like like it was a constant kind of thing. And I've had, never had any children in my life as well, so I've never had that sort of children love thing going on either. Um, so, yeah, I feel like I haven't had enough love in my life. Um, and uh, it was a weird feeling yesterday to think that, that's, uh, that that was a thing. I'd, I'd never really realised that. Um, and I'd like to have more. So, um, And I think that's why I'm craving. So... Um, Evan Carmichael was saying in one of the videos I was watching tomorrow, both linked in the bottom, there's a great thing from um, Bill Gates, actually, who, who talked about being your, being, well, as a leader in a business, he was talking about being the chief goal um, officer in the, in the business. Uh, but I thought that's also kind of good for yourself as well. You should be the chief goal officer of your own life as well, which I think was kind of a cool idea as well. Um, where was I going with that? Um, oh, uh, Evan Carmichael said something clever, wasn't he, about... Oh, God. I hate it when I go off on a track like that and I can't remember where I came from. Um, if I remember it, when I look back at the video, <laughs> I'll make a comment in the comments and remind people what it was I was talking about um, and say the thing that I was originally thinking about before I got distracted onto the Bill Gates thing there, um, which was kind of cool. Uh, and there's also five uh, habits 
um, in, the, in the links and the descriptions there as well. And also the Blinkist Book of the Day is all about being creative, which is kind of cool as well, because I do need to write a book. I've, I've been trying to write a book since 2014, I think, um, and just never got around to it. I've got two or three books inside my head um, that just need to get out and written. Including my Camino book, my Camino book, which will be a, a, a well, this comes comes into it a little bit. Um, it's a kind of romantic comedy slash personal development book. That's the idea. Is it's it's about walking the Camino, finding love, but also finding um, uh, per, uh, personal breakthroughs. Really, um, it's about my uh, potential. The, 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 the near suicide I had <laughs> uh, while I was walking the Camino that, I don't want to make too light of that but there was a moment when I was just so miserable and, and pissed off um, with life um, that I, it considered, I considered it to be honest um, uh, but I didn't last long uh, and then I got I mean the whole, the, whole, the whole point of the story is that this happened and then like an hour later uh, I basically met an angel that's kind of how I'm going to phrase it in the book um, somebody who came into my life uh, and showed me how to feel joy and love again so you should turn my life around completely um, in those uh, 10 days we spent together um, and it was just amazing uh, to have felt that love and joy um, in those moments it, it was heartbreaking afterwards there was a sort of tragic part of it afterwards um, which may or may not go into the book <laughs> um, uh, not tragic in, de in like death wise uh, just tragic for me for my personal pain that I was suffering but even that itself was a, was a life lesson as well so uh, it's all good stuff really um, I've just realised I've gone on my 10 minutes, so um, <laughs> that's the end of my 10 minutes. Rambly, kind of weird thing about love, which wasn't quite what I wanted to say. Although, I did also want to mention the fact that it was Martin Luther King Day yesterday in America, um, which was a little bit frustrating for me because I was going to do some share dealing yesterday afternoon and the American stock market wasn't open, which is kind of frustrating because I've been looking forward to sorting some stuff out over the weekends. Um, uh, but yeah, there was a lot of uh, things on American, t American TV last night about Martin Luther King Day and about loving people. And one of his famous quotes, which I use all the time, is that the darkness will not drive out the light. Only the, the light will... I can't remember what the actual quote is. Again, I'll try and remember to, quote, uh, to, to comment that in the comments. But um, light will drive out darkness. Um, so you put a candle into a dark room and it lights up the dark room and it drives away the darkness. Um, morning, Deb, by the way, as well. Um, uh, so yeah. Uh, hopefully that's uh, made some sense to some people <laughs> um, and created some love in the world because I like to love oh that's what it was Evan Carmichael <laughs> I just remember now Evan Carmichael was talking about his uh, one word thing from his book he's got a book called um, I think it's called Believe actually which is his one word uh, but he also talks about what is your one word actually, maybe he had a book called your one word I can't remember maybe it was a blog I don't know anyway uh, the point was he said try and find yourself one word for your life uh, morning Sarah I haven't spoken to you for ages. We should have a chat sometime, catch up. Um, what is your one word for your life? That's what he was he was trying to say there. Um, and uh, and I realised that as I was listening to that, that my one word is love. Um, his word is believe. Um, that's why he calls himself Believe Nation. Um, uh, and there's, um, I mean, there's lots of other people who have different words as well. But mine is love because I want to send love out into the world. I want to create love. I want to give people love and I want to receive more love into my life. So you can see how that kind of works from the thing I was saying earlier about um, about not feeling like I've had enough love in my life. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, and then of course how I found that love and that joy um, walking the Camino. Hence the story, the read in the book, how it all ties together. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's it <laughs> that's it my one word is love um love in the world um 51 years of loyalty not sure where that came from okay um hello though <laughs> um of 51 years of loyalty i can't work out the context of that susan sorry but hello welcome for seeing it didn't pop up on my screen to say you were watching but hello susan how you doing um Susan used to come walking with me when I did my uh, mindfulness walks in the Cotswolds a few years ago. At least I think that was she, Susan, wasn't it? I'm just trying to remember if that was the right same name I'm remembering. Um, can't see from the picture exactly. Um, yes, so anyway, there you go. Um, my one word is love. Um, it's all part of what I do. It's uh, helping people to see, to love themselves as well. Um, because one of the things I say is that the more you can improve the relationship with yourself, the more you can improve the relationship with other people, the people around you. Um, and then that can improve your life as well. So um, when I start talking to people and say, you don't need to suffer with anxiety, depression, or stress, anxiety, and depression, sad, S-A-D. Um, you don't need to be sad. Um, you can 
find a freedom from stress, anxiety and depression by understanding your own mind, by understanding how you've become the person you are, by understanding your relationship with yourself um, and understanding how you can rewire your own brain for positivity rather than negativity. Okay, that's all from me. I've got to go because I think I may have run out of time on my even in on Instagram now, so I might have to edit this down. But anyway, take care, guys. Have a lovely day, and bye for now. Love you all. Mwah. Take care, and send love out into the world for me. Cheers.